Sometimes when you win, you lose. Right, hello guys and welcome to this 40k battle report. Got another apocalypse game for you today. It's not a massive apocalypse game, only 3,000 points. Which when you consider the last one we uploaded was more than double that. And then the apocalypse specials we do each year are, you know, vast in comparison. But still, a pretty big game by regular standards. And what we've got for you today is 3,000 points of orcs in a really, really, really great looking army. And 3,000 points of very, very strong, very, very tough necrons who we all know uh, are one of Commissar Warwick's uh, favourite armies, uh, sure. <laughs> anyway, um, so what we've got also, we've gone for a custom scenario here, and we are playing the Relic, and we're playing Vanguard Strike. So if you look, let's look at the terrain first of all. If you look, this white line of dice is the centre line running through there, and then we've got Orc deployment back here. So Orcs will be deploying this, this side of the, the white line. And over here, this is going to be Necron deployment, which is going to be really interesting to see how this match shapes up. We are playing the Relic. So in the center of the board there, that is the Relic. So uh, if you follow the channel, you may have noticed that uh, these two armies that are going to be competing, so they're not some that I personally play, so I'm not really going to be taking part in this battle. It's going to be two other players fighting out, uh, Rob and John, who have been, both been on the channel before. Um, but, however, we've got a bit of a custom mission going. So I'm not just left doing nothing. I am going to be taking command of these four assassins. Right, so in terms of rules then, not too much to remember. It's basically a standard game of 40k. We're using the standard 40k rules as opposed to the apocalypse rules. Um, the only exception is, um, so that's the relic there were free and you can take the relic and that all works out the same as 40k. And then secondaries of Slay the Warlord, Lion Breaker and First Blood. What makes it different is this element. So it's kind of like having a third army in it. How we've, The rules for these guys, they're always going to go last. So... Um, at the moment, it's orcs deploying here and get, taking first turn. But um, so it'll be orcs, then necrons, then these guys. Always, 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 these guys will go last as a sort of a sub phase at the end of both turns, whilst both uh, players have gone. So these guys are enemy models to both armies, so both sides will be fighting them. And basically, in terms of narrative, what's happened, guys, is the Orcs and Necrons are clashing on this, this world, trying to claim this relic. And the Imperium have Gravshoot grav inserted these four assassins to hold the relic at all costs until relief can arrive. So they're an independent force to both armies, fighting both of them. However... Special rules, they have a void shield generator or some kind of uh, shield generator around this platform. So no one can fire into this this uh, this area beyond the edge of this hill. So the reason we've done that is basically so if that was the case, you could have a million looters just fire and kill one and then a million warriors fire and kill one and they're just kind of pointless. So you're going to have to move in close to tackle them. However, we're also saying that they can fire out of it because they have the right harmonics for the shield so they can access it and, you know, close and open it up at, uh, at will to fire out. And as a special rule as well, what we're saying is that, so if these guys are all dead by turn five, then that'll be that and the game will just play out as normal. However, if these guys can hold out and survive until turn five, then what we're saying is that we a special task force of some... Uh, Imperial Guard flyers can fly on and rescue these guys, in which case the objective will be removed from the game and both sides are going to have to rely on secondaries. So it's a little bit more interesting than just a regular game of the Relic because it's essentially the Relic but we've got this added unstable element, this new element where these both armies are going to have to take on this very elite little force trying to defend the relic and if they can't do it, if neither side you know, chooses to tangle with them they may well lose the relic and have to go to secondary so it's really really going to be interesting how this pans out also it adds another tactical element as well does one player move in quickly and have to fight these guys and deplete his army but at the same time claim it or will one player let the other one stand back and uh, wear himself out and then swoop in once he's taken some losses. Interesting, interesting game. Let's have a look at the two armies.
Okay, so this is our 3,000 point orc army, uh, led by Zad Snark on a war bike, uh, with a pain boy on a war bike as well, along with another war boss on a war bike, and another pain boy on a war bike, both with triple grot orderlies. Uh, those two uh, lead a squad of 10 knob bikers apiece, led by a boss knob with a power claw. Um, those are the elite choices. Meanwhile, we've got three squads of 30 boys, both led, all led by a knob with a power claw and a boss pole. Behind the heavy support, <clears throat> we've got two squads of 12 looters, both of which in battle wagons. My new custom battle wagon there. And the uh, pirate ship battle wagon, which is going to be fun to play. Uh, with fast attack, we have got a squad of 27 storm boys, led by a storm boy knob with a power claw and a boss pole. And then two more troop choices, two 10 man squads of grots, led by um, runt herds. And that is the whole shebang. Yep. Okay, we've got 3,000 points of Necrons, and they're led by Orican the Diviner. Uh, he's the Warlord, and he's flanked by his two lieutenants. On um, this side is Vagard Oberon, and on the other side is an Overlord, and he's got a Face Shifter, a Nightmare Shroud, and a War Scythe. And then on from them a little bit uh, are the Wraiths. Uh, they're the only thing in the army that are not what you see, what you get, because I hate the whip calls, but I've given them whip calls, but I hate the models. So. <laughs> um, then in the mid centre, we've got three units of 20 man Necron Warriors, all the same. And uh, going over from then again, we've got the um, we've got three spiders, no upgrades, and a unit of three scarabs. Behind them, tomb blades, and the tomb blades are upgraded with uh, shield veins, uh, nebulous scope. And sorry, mate. Uh, and particle right beamers. Mm -hmm. um, and behind them, two night side uh, night sides are standard. Mm -hmm. Then over here, three annihilation barges. And uh, in front of them, we've got the tomb stalker. Uh, he's finishing off the rest of that dreadnought. And <laughs> <laughs> we've got the um, triad Praetorians with void blades and particle beamers. Mm -hmm. And in the middle, of the Sea Town or Catan, have it's pronounced Shard of the Nightbringer. Okay, so no no formations there, is that no, right? No formations. Uh, may I ask why is it you don't take formations? Is there any reason? Or because Necrons are totally overpowered. Yeah. And we don't want to make them any better. That's like um, Matthew from Mini Wargaming says he doesn't take the Decurion just because it's it's too powerful and he doesn't yeah. find it fun anymore. Yeah. So uh, I think you have a similar philosophy, but yeah. Great looking army, uh, nice to have Necrons on the channel. They have featured on the channel before, but this is a new force going up against the Orcs. So looking forward to seeing how they get on. Let's dive in to deployment. Right, so deployment is now done for both sides. We'll start over here looking at the Orcs, who will be going first, unless of course the Necrons can seize. And they've got the Knob Bikers all on the left of their line. The battle wagon which has got the looters in is here we've got 30 boys and the Gretchen out front and then storm boys around this building second battle wagon here and finally we've got another 30 boys and more Gretchen out front whereas if we come around this side to look at the Necron deployment we've got the units of Warriors out front, and the Warlord's been deployed in this one. Then we've got the Raves in behind them, Annihilation Barges back here, and the Spiders and the Scarabs here, another Annihilation Barge. And then on the very end we've got the Nightbringer, and also we've got the Stalker on the end of the line, along with the Tomb Blades. And also almost got them, the Praetorians, back here as well. So that's it for Necron deployment. About ready to start this game. As we say, try not to get too bogged down in the uh, the Assassin's guys. They're, they're there as a bit of fun. So um, the idea is that it's going to be a normal game. Relic, 3,000 points. 
all the stuff you'd expect, regular 40k rules. Only thing is, when you move onto this thing, you're going to have to tangle with some assassins who are going to try and defend it. And at the end, if they if they survive, which we're not expecting them to, who knows, maybe they might be airlifted out. <laughs> and that'll be interesting. So, ready to start the game. Can the Necron seize the initiative on a roll of a six? Four. So, we'll get back to you after movement for the Orcs on their turn one. Reserves for both sides. No re reserves for the Necrons with the exception of the two Night Sives. In reserve for the Orcs, we've got a squad of 30 boys. Uh, the looters are in the, um, the battle wagons. And then this unit with the Warlord, the Knob Bikers, they are outflanking. Right, movement for the Orcs on their turn one. And the bikes here, the knob bikers, they've sort of all moved up and spread out. Scarily, scarily close to the, uh, the enemy there. Battle wagon has stayed still and the boys in the Gretchen have moved up. Storm boys, they've actually decided to stay still. And then here, the other boys and the Gretchen have also pushed up. Right, shooting phase for the Orcs, uneventful, uh, nothing really of note. Uh, these guys have all turbo boosted an inch, which is a clever move, because the way Orc bikes work is if they turbo boost, they get an extra plus one to their cover save, and it's night fighting, night fighting's in effect. So stealth, jink, and plus one to their cover save, so they have a two up jink next turn, which is awesome. Uh, then you've got round here, uh, these guys have just run a little bit. Uh, Storm boys have done nothing, and these units here have also run. Uh, and then the last thing of note is the looters in the two battle wagons. They have both decided to focus fire at the um, annihilation barge over there on the end of the Necron line, who declared he was jinking before they'd fired, but unfortunately, all the ar all the shots just bounced harmlessly off its front armor, with doing no damage whatsoever. So that is it for Orc turn one. Very quick turn. Time now for movement for the Necrons. Right, movement for the Necrons on their turn one. Just generally the whole line has moved forward, not too much to report. So down here, all of these units moving forward. Everyone advancing, Raves advancing, all the Warriors advancing. Only thing to stay still was the Annihilation Barges uh, and the Scarabs. Uh, we've had the Spiders have bred three new Scarab bases, so the army has grown even bigger. And the Warlord, you can see him just there behind the statue. He has detached himself from that unit there and is now on his own. So, movement over. No psychic, of course. Time for shooting. Right, shooting completely done for the Necrons. There's going to be no charges, I'm presuming. So, um, that is the end of Necron turn one. So, everything, everything that could possibly fire opened up at the bikers and killed a grand total of three. That's how survivable that unit is. They've got a pain boy in there, they've got a two up jink. Trying to take him out is just so, so difficult. So that is <laughs> only three of the knob bikers dead are dead. So I think it's safe to say the Necrons are a little bit worried about them, seeing as everything fired at them. And then the Raves, they've made a run move and they've desperately tried to spread themselves out, trying to protect the slightly more squishy units, because Raves are really, really tough. Right, and actually uh, it wasn't the end of Necron uh, turn one because we forgot we had some assaults down here and uh, the Nightbringer didn't get in, but the Stalker did and uh, not that effective an assault, only inflicted the one wound on the Knob Biker. But the problem is they were so spread out down here that so few of them could actually attack. They did no damage to the Stalker, so they're now tied up in combat. So it could actually be a massively decisive... Uh, event there because these guys can't now ask to charge in the next turn. They're going to be tied up in combat. So now it's time for the assassin's turn. Right, so turn one for the assassins. So in the psychic phase, the psycho assassin, whose name escapes me, the Kalexus assassin, fired his uh, psychic attack, which uses D3 of your psych charge. Um, only got the one shot, didn't do anything down here. And then he threw a sight grenade in the shooting phase as well, nothing. The needle pistol here from this assassin fired down also did nothing, so the Necrons are untouched. The only damage done has been against the Orcs, funnily enough, although we've targeted both, both sides pretty equally. But the uh, Kaleidos assassin, yeah, uh, used her uh, neutral... What's it? 
The Clay Assassin nude her, used her Neural Shredder down here, which is a Flamer template, and killed three Grots. And then the Vindicare Assassin fired his uh, Strength 10 AP2 Sniper Rifle at the Battle Wagon. And uh, we thought he was alright, because we thought he was going to be able to make a cover save, but the uh, one of his abilities is he ignores cover, so it's taken a glance off the Battle Wagon. So that's, all, that's not too devastating for a turn one from these guys, but it remains to be seen how big an impact they will have as the game goes on. But, so, uh, roll to see if these guys come on. Nope. Nope. And these guys, do they arrive? Yes. Yeah. Right, Orc movement on their turn two. As you can see, the, the horde is advancing, really moving a good distance here. Storm boys have jumped down, not ready to commit just yet, waiting for the right time to move up. And this battle wagon has moved slightly as well to get better shots down there. These guys, of course, locked in combat. But as we come around to this side... Outflanking with uh, Zad Strick, isn't it? Zad Snark. Zad Snark, sorry. Uh, and he's come on here, driving up here, and he's uh, flanked the Orc forces. The other boys that are in reserve haven't arrived yet. So, nothing else to report. Time for shooting. Right, shooting phase. It's been better for the Orcs this turn. So, the looters and the other looters, they've combined fire again. And they've taken out this Annihilation Barge, which gives them first blood. Now, as we said at the beginning, on turn 5, if, if the Assassins can survive that long, which I don't think is very likely, but if they can, a Relief Force uh, will fly on and try and airlift them out with the Relic. Now, I know, obviously, the, the normal rules, you can't put a Relic in a flyer and zoom it off, but um, we're obviously bending them for this narrative, um, and we're saying that they could fly the Relic out, so... If that does happen, secondary is going to be crucial, and that gives the Orcs a big advantage in terms of secondary, so we, we like that. And then, also, massive run moves. These guys have really, really covered a good amount of ground. And next turn, especially if a war is called, a war's not been called this turn, these guys are good move, good run. They could be in the fray. And also a slight turbo boost here from these guys, which again is going to give them a good uh, cover save next turn. So, uh, awesome stuff from the Orcs. And we're going to see now this combat here. Right, so assault phase then in the orc turn. Uh, these guys making pile-in moves uh, at their initiative step. Um, the stalker basically did nothing, didn't hurt any of the knob bikers. But now they can bring more of their hits to bear as they've moved round. And they've taken three wounds off him. So he's only got one left. Uh, as it's time now for Necron turn two. Right, Necron movement on their turn two. So on from reserve, both the Knight Sives have uh, flown up this way. Then the Warriors here, they've entered the, uh, the area controlled by the Assassins, which means we may well be getting some Assassin-based combat this turn, which would be interesting. Um, they, maybe they're the first to provoke the Assassins. And uh, these guys as well, they've also pushed up on this side. Praetorians as well, following up, and more Scarabs, I believe, has been, have been bred back here. Um, round this way as well, Annihilation Barge and the Warriors, they're also moving back this way, along with the Tomb Blades. I believe one of the Tomb Blades actually killed himself uh, on the terrain. So lots of uh, swinging round, lots of Necron units swinging round to counter this threat. Then over here, Nightbringer and the Raves have moved this way. So it's an interesting div division of forces by the Necrons here. They've clearly tasked some units with the uh, job of bringing down uh, this unit of knob bikers. They've you know, swung units around for that job. They've allocated units over here who are going to clearly move down and try and take up the knob bikers. We've also got warriors heading towards the assassins and the night sives down there. So a real split with the Necrons forces. Will it pay dividends or will they be divided and destroyed piecemeal? or just emerge stronger, having taken out each of these elements. 
Who knows, as we move into their shooting phase. Shooting for the Necrons on their turn two. So we had five from the Night Sires, came down and killed five Storm Boys. Uh, this squad of warriors opened up on the battle wagon and did nothing. And then these guys who have entered the circle, uh, they fired at the Vindicare assassin and took him out. Uh, only just though, and inflicted three, three unsaved wounds, which is enough to kill him. Uh, so maybe... These, uh, the assassins may uh, have to strike back in their turn, which is about to come up. Over here, no shooting, because these units are either locked in combat, well, and the knobs are locked in combat as well, so they can't fire at them. And then here, fire on the knob bikers has inflicted some casualties. How many? Uh, three, I believe. Yeah, we've had three casualties inflicted on these knob bikers. So that covers the shooting phase as we move into the assault phase right fight phase is over to the necrons it's been absolutely devastating for the necron big unit of knob bikers here fighting it out with the raves and the stalker and the uh, katan um did manage to kill the stalker but then lost enough um bikers were just cut down by the raves they're really nasty and with a bit of help as well uh, broke morale and were overrun completely destroyed and even if they weren't overrun pretty close to the edge of the table so they probably run off anyway uh, rolling squabble twice on the knob rule table but there was not enough of them left so they just broke and that was just really really devastating massively expensive massively effective unit but when they get bogged down like that and just hit by key units like the raves it shows that even powerful units like the knob bikers can fall and then over here scarabs tar pitting these guys, I believe, uh, how many scarab bases were taken out? Three, Three scarab bases taken out and uh, a wound on this one. And uh, I think they only inflicted one wound on the yeah. the uh, knobs, but that was saved with feel no pain. So um, they've done their job then, the scarabs. They've, they've bogged these guys down. So the Necrons, it seems to be early on swinging in their favour. They've taken out a massively crucial unit for the Orcs and they've tar pitted another. And they're even making steps towards the relic. So it's going to be interesting how it pans out. Now let's see what the assassins have to say about all this. Right, so assassin turn two. Bad turn overall. Been a bit disappointing. So we moved down here with the Clydus assassin and the Aversa assassin. And we fired in at the Necrons with everything we had. And also... Uh, this guy lent his firepower with his psychic attack. We did kill a couple of Necrons. I think we may have killed three in the, uh, for the shooting phase. So in the assault phase, we charged in. And a challenge was issued by the Overlord, which the Clyde Assassin accepted. And she did all of her attacks. Did no damage whatsoever. He made all of his Invon saves. And he's got two up, he's got two up armor, four up Invon, this, this Overlord. And then he just cut her down without any, any troubles at all. So an assassin, who's meant to be the ultimate badass, just got completely destroyed by a random Necron Overlord, like a complete jabroni, and that's really disappointing. But then the Aversa assassin uh, did kill five Necrons, which is pretty bad, pretty good result. Uh, the Necrons had lost combat by two, but they made morale, so the combat continues. So really disappointing about the Clydus assassin there, and the... Uh, the Vindicare assassin went down as well really easily, but the Aversa one, he's he has killed five Necrons in the in that combat, and he has won the combat, so he's doing okay. Um, and we'll have to see if we can hold out. But I have a feeling we're just going to get moved up and shot out of there, and uh, it'll be up for uh, up to him to be the last assassin left as we move into turn three for Orcs. Right, movement done for the Orcs, and they've called a war this turn. And Storm Boys, they've jumped up here, and they're in striking distance of the Rays now. Ha thrown into reverse gear, the battle wagon, driven back here, trying to desperately get away from these, these units that could easily take it out. And then here, scrambling up the hill, and this is actually really, really cool. If you look, there's the, the relic on top of the hill, and then scrambling up the hill here, we've got the Orcs pushing up here. And on the other side, We've got the Necrons moving up as well. Who will get there first remains to be seen. And um, all of these units charging desperately towards the Relic. And the Battle Wagon moving up here as well. Uh, only thing to note that we haven't talked... And, um, oh yeah, I should say as well. These units, of course, tar-pitted in combat. Only other thing to note, though. 
boys failed to sharp again. So there's another 30 boys still in reserve that have failed to sharp for the Orcs on this turn three. But let's dive straight into their shooting phase. It's an important one. Right, in the middle of Orcs shooting and the looters here, they're firing, snap firing up at this Night Scythe. He's declared he's jinking. We've rolled for how many shots they've got. They've got three each. That's 30 si shi 36 shots. Here we go. And not, not too good. I see two sixes. Two Only two sixes. And you need force to glance. Oh, nothing. Nothing. Right, next round of shooting, uh, well, same round, but uh, next target, the looters in here have fired, declaring they're firing at the other one, and he's declared he's jinking again, so round two, this time we only have two shots each, but how's this going to pan out? And I see two. Two hits again. Two hits again, but off less dice. Uh, Forced to glance, six is, uh, five and six is pen. Nothing, nothing, Finish. completely ineffective. Shooting phase for the Orcs on their turn three. So run moves. Storm boys just run up an inch, get close to there. These boys, they've run up a good five inches here. Now ready to attack the assassin or maybe move down here and attack the, the Necrons. Grots, they've moved up here. Good blocking unit. And these boys, they've long conga line they've formed as they're trying to catch up. And these Grots as well, also moving up here. Uh, only actual shooting though. Battle wagons firing their their um, death cannons. Kill cannons. Kill cannons. Sorry, firing their kill cannons over here. First one fired it here, scattered back, killed one Necron from this this uh, squad, and then the one here fired at this squad. Now initially, we were we we were like, well, they can't shoot them because they're in combat, but then we remembered that. These are two enemy armies, and we think that was completely fine for the orcs to target them, because you know the orcs are just again against the assassins just as much as they are the necrons. So they fired and scattered back, and I believe killed only another one. So pretty disappointing shooting there. But then, as you saw, looters targeting the night scythes did absolutely nothing, but they have both jinked. So that they did that at least. We won't be fa facing them firing at full ballistic skill next um, turn. Right, so fight phase is over now. Good result here, Scarabs were taken out. Then they've consolidated back into the ruins. So uh, if these guys are gonna come across, I'm gonna make it a bit more difficult for them to get at them. Then over here, they charged in against uh, the Calexus assassin and um, took him out with no real dramas. I think he killed two of them. So the assassins have all fallen essentially, except for the last one here. And they've not put up much of a fight to be honest. They've they've killed a few things, but not been uh, that devastating at all. So it's a sad day for the assassins. Somehow I have a feeling that the Imperium won't be claiming the relic. It'll be one of either the Orcs or it'll be the Necrons. Um, real disappointment though. Major disappointment here. Uh, with not the longest charge in the world. We rolled a double one. Then re-rolled one of them and rolled a two. Didn't get in. Really disappointing. So that sums up the turn. Right, movement for the Necrons. What an absolute mess this is. Units swarming all over the uh, the relic from both sides. So uh, these guys are locked in combat. The Praetorians, they've jumped up here. Um, and we've laid them on their sides because it's very difficult to fit them properly on that slope. Uh, warriors, they've moved up there as well, and the Raves, they've also jumped right up there. It's a really, really concerted effort from the Necrons to, to get that relic, because the Orcs are swarming all over it at the moment. And uh, Night Scythes, they've pushed up there. Over here, uh, Spiders have moved around here. The Annihilation Barges, still facing off against the Orcs. And uh, the Warriors, they've moved here, but um, Tomb Blades, they're there as well. And the Nightbringer, He's moved over here. So that's about it for movement. Right then, so shooting for the Necrons, good firepower here. Annihilation barges, warriors, um, tomb blades, everything pouring fire at the, the um, knob bikers here. Killed about five of them and they made their morale and they've just managed to sort of cr um, scrape by. So good, good news to the Orcs there, really. Then over here, Praetorians and Warriors also firing up at the boys. Killed around seven of them. So you can see there's a big hole there where they've, they've been shot down. Um, and we're expecting some assaulting here as well.
And I guess the last thing is the night side. Snap firing, because they jinked out of the battle wagon, did absolutely nothing. Right then, fight phase for the Necrons. It's been a good round for the Orcs, actually. Orcs have done particularly well. Uh, and not a bad round for the Imperium either. We'll go on to that in a second. So starting over here, one Wraith fell and one took a wound. But then many Storm Boys fell. I can't remember how many exactly, but you can see that squad is... Nine. About nine Storm Boys. However, they failed morale, made it on the... On the Nobral... On the Mobral table, rather. They... Uh, made uh, a one which is born to fight so they're okay here though the Praetorians uh, they're charged through uh, terrain no no um, grenades they were striking initiative one five of them killed by the boys before they could even have a chance to strike one the remaining Praetorian killed one but at the same initiative step the knob killed him so completely taken out so that was a good 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 result there for the the orcs and then down here the Eris a Visser Assassin, uh, in combat there, he killed two, and then they didn't do any damage back to him, bust morale, and then he overran them, taking out that unit completely, and he's consolidated down here, and it's actually his turn next. It's uh, the last survivor of the Assassins, let's see what he does. So turn three for the Assassins then, and he was here, he's moved over here and run a little bit over here. Uh, the thinking is, I know his objective is to to claim that objective and defend it but if he moves in there it's going to be the orc turn and they'll probably take him out and even if he survives the orc turn he's going to be taken out by the necrons so there's no point in him just suiciding himself so he's moved out here and uh, his plan is to wait and see who wins this particular engagement and which way the relic goes and then once he sees which way the relic is going like a true assassin he's going to stalk it and try and claim it back so it's time now for orc turn four Right, movement for the Orcs then. This unit has claimed the relic. Uh, the squad of boys there, triumphant, having butchered the Praetorians. And they're moving it back down the hill. Grots have moved up. Uh, it was unfortunate, they only rolled a three, so they've only moved it three inches back. Uh, these boys moving round here, and these grots moving over that way. And then here, the battle wagon has moved up onto this piece of train here. And last thing to report is the bikers over here they've ridden out for death and glory and are looking to go out in some style over here as we move into the shooting phase right shooting then for the orcs uh, guns here from the bikes killed one warrior uh, this squad of orcs they've run six inches and they're quite close to these guys now grots have run as well down here uh, the gretchen and the um boys here fired some pot shots and killed a couple of uh a couple of warriors, but really the will work was done by the um, I can never remember what these called. The what the bat wagon? Yeah, no, what's the gun called? Oh, kill cannon. Kill cannons, kill cannons. Two direct hits killed a ton of warriors, did make their morale, but I think about maybe even. 10 were killed by those guys really good effort there and then looters snap firing up at these guys um, No damage done again. So good shit turn of shooting assault phase one thing tonight we've actually forgotten to bring on this squad of boys from reserve at the start of the turn. Um, we've decided to let them on now. Uh, seems fair, because all they're going to do is move on and not actually do anything. They can't assault, obviously, because they're coming from reserve. They're not going to have any targets to shoot at, so they've just moved on there. And that's just uh, something to remember. Sorry about forgetting that, guys. Right, we've had a challenge here issued in the middle of this assault phase. And it's um, Zadsnark, and he's in a challenge with uh, the Necron Warlord. So it's Warlord against Warlord, and it's going to be a really epic clash. Both of them are initiative four, and he's got a special rule of his power claw that he strikes at regular initiative. So when they're going to strike at the same time, who can kill who? So strength 10, AP 2, but hitting on uh, force. Two, Ooh, hits. two hits. And then strength 10, so wounding on twos. Yep, two wounds, and then he gets his reanimation and also a four up invon. So four up invon. Made them both. So no wounds there. And then striking back, he gets four attacks, I believe. And it's. Oh, hits, hits, hits with three. Sorry, I've got that. It's alright, mate. It's on upper level. <laughs> upper level. <laughs> yeah, cool. Uh, yep, all hits. And then he's wounding on twos. Okay, one, so that's three wounds, and feel no pain. 
because it's three cheat dollar. strength seven on t5. So you get five ups. No, three, three wounds. Dead. Slay the warlord to the necrons. Right, so assault phase. A bad loss here for the uh, the orcs. Uh, didn't didn't do much in the way of damage, and like I say, the warlord has fallen. So bad, bad stuff there. Over here, not the worst. They did take out another wraith. Lost a massive chunk of uh, the storm boys. There are only a handful left, but they didn't break. Uh, they got breaking heads um, on the mob rule table and lost a couple more boys. But that's not the end of the world because now the raves will probably finish them off in their turn, and then the boys can charge in. Right, Necron movement is done. Uh, it's <laughs> it's definitely uh, a panicked movement, I think. The Orcs, they are they have got control of the Relic, and that's going to be so important in this match. So your um, Necrons are now desperately trying to get over there. So these Necrons warriors here shoving themselves up the hill. Um, the Tomb Blades zooming over there. Nightbringer, he's moved over here. Spiders and the two Annihilation Barges, again, all turning this way, leaving just these warriors locked in combat here. So really, as I said, if you look, this is a very much an orky kind of area. They've got control of the Relic, so these uh, units just throwing themselves to try and get it back. Shooting for the Necrons. Right, shooting phase for the Necrons then. Uh, both of the Annihilation Barges fired at the boys, killed quite a few. Tomb Spiders uh, moved up as well, just running. Uh, this guy uses powers of the um, Sitan or Katan or however you want to pronounce it. And uh, one other shooting attack, he could use them both. And he killed um, with the Blast some Grots and also I think four, four boys. And then over here, Tomb Blades absolutely wrecked half of that squad with their um, AP5 ignores cover blasts. Both of these units had to morale check. But fortunately, both of them are sticking around as we move into the assault phase. Right, so we also, one thing we forgot to do is do the morale check for the Gret uh, Gretchen. We forgot that uh, the Grots had lost some, uh, some uh, forces and uh, they actually failed it. So they are fleeing back towards their board edge. Right, so assault phase uh, done on the Necrons turn four. About to go into Orc turn five where the game can end at the end of that turn. So things really heating up. Raves basically wiped the squad. Only thing left is the knob. But he managed to stick around long enough so he hasn't run away. Over here, Orcs actually won the combat by two. But the Necrons also made morale. So that's interesting. That, that fight continues. And then down here, it's a bit of a mop-up operation. The last of the Nob Bikers uh, died. So that concludes Necron turn four. A little bit of an Imperium turn four. And then straight on into Orc turn five. We've moved back here, and we fired and killed two boys, um, and that is it. So Orc turn five, coming right up. Right, so movement for the Orcs. These guys have moved here, getting in charge distance. Uh, Gretchen continued to run away. Uh, battle wagons have stayed still. Uh, these boys have moved up here, ready to get involved in this fight, and these guys are locked in combat. Shooting. Shooting for the Orcs. Uh, we've had fire from the looters here, kill three tomb blades uh, they made their morale then fire from this one go through here no damage at all and the last thing was these grots they know that at the end of this turn um there might be a relief force arriving so they tried to take on the assassin here and just did nothing so straight on into the assault phase assault phase there for the orcs uh, these guys slammed into that squad and wiped them and then they've consolidated off down here with the relic. Now there was a bit of a debate whether you can consolidate the relic, but seeing as the rule says you can't go more than six, but they haven't gone more than six this turn, we've moved off five inches down there. And then these guys consolidate out, trying to spread out, make a screen, try and protect the relic, let them get away with it. And uh, down here, not so good. Uh, didn't do any damage at all to the raves, and the raves killed quite a few, so pretty disappointing. Um, had a count up of objectives. Right now, the Orcs hold the Relic for free. They got First Blood and they have Line Breaker down here. So that's five. Necrons have Slay the Warlord from here and they have Line Breaker there with the Raves. So five, two as we go into Necron turn five. Right, movement for the Necrons. Uh, as you can see, just a big wave advancing up the board now. Uh, all of these units pushing up, pushing up, moving through cover, pushing up. And uh, the Night Scythes are on again. 
But the, my, my most important thing to note is they, this unit has Deep Strike. Uh, this character, his special rule means that once per game, he and his unit can just Deep Strike anywhere on the board. And they Deep Strike here. Uh, well, actually, they're a little bit back here, and I actually just moved here, which is really, really fortunate because it was uh, very, very close to them mishapping, which could have been so crucial in this game. They have landed there, and um, with the rest of the units pushing up, and the Knight Sives in support. Right, so shooting then for the Necrons, fired down here at the Grots, did kill a couple, but they still maintain a lot in Breaker, which is a good result for them. Then we had. Firepower here, crucially, kill the Orc squad that's holding the objective. And then the Tomb Blades turbo boosted up here and are now sitting on the Relic. Now, we've had a bit of a discussion. So, in a normal game, they would count as controlling the Relic. They would, they would count as controlling an objective. However, it says the Relic, specifically, to claim it, you need to be... You need to move into it in the movement phase and a specific model claims it. So, we're not sure whether... It, the rules that you would just control an objective by moving to it supersede the claiming it, or whether claiming it is specifically about movement, if you know what we're trying to say. So we've had a debate, people have made their points either way, and we've all agreed that uh, you can only claim it in the movement phase. So right now, they're not, they don't count as holding that. They count as um, just being near it. Um, so right now, that's not being scored by anyone. So that's an important point to note. If that's wrong... Uh, do understand everyone makes mistakes and that's our interpretation of the rules um and the last thing to happen night scythes fired into the battle wagons blew it up and the um killed basically <laughs> almost all of the looters i think seven of the looters and they are now pinned time for the assault phase right so assault phase then assault has been launched here failed assault has been launched here failed um and all we have left is the rave so just roll that up for you that's the end of the turn Right, and then this assault down here, one of the raves died, a couple of boys died, they um, fell around the mob rule, a couple more died because of that, uh, and that's that. Got time for the assassin's turn, and then it will be possibly the end of the game. Right, so the stipulation was, if the assassins could survive until turn 5, the relief force would arrive. And these guys have arrived, and the assassins don't control it, but these guys can show up. And the assassin can make a dash for it. And if they can extract him, then that, that just adds to the fun. So this is what we've got coming on. Two Vendettas and this Forge World Flyer. And we've got some Stormtroopers in them as well. Right, so Task Force uh, here has arrived. Uh, attempting to, to uh, get the assassin out. And uh, the assassin moved here. And in the assault phase, he'd launched a charge over at these guys. And he failed. He, he, the reason is because he rolls on 3d6 when he charges. That's one of his special rules. And then the fighters here firing down at uh, this this uh, annihilation barge, who uh, jinked, uh, didn't do any damage. Then the Avenger uh, fighter, he fired at this guy, and again, jink saves made. And finally, the Vendetta on the end fired at the battle wagon, exploded, killed some looters, and also killed some Necrons in that squad. So they've targeted uh, these units indiscriminately. They've killed, uh, they've fired at two Necron units, fired at um, uh, the Orcs as well. But the question is, will the game end? Let's roll up. Right then, so, we have had a count up. Line Breaker and Solar Warlord over here for the Necrons. First Blood and line breaker for the orcs uh, nothing for the imperium but they were never really in the game their job was to try and steal this and uh, deny it to other people but they did have some fun on the end when they flew on with their fighters so and this is not being held by anyone currently we've agreed that that may not be the correct interpretation of the rule we've all discussed it and we all think that sounds reasonable um so we're going to roll up now and does the game continue or will it end as a draw game continues Right, end of turn six for the orcs. Every single orc seems to just charge to the objective. They've killed the tomb blades on it, and they've now plonked themselves emphatically around it. And uh, interesting to note, the grots actually regrouped, and then with their three-inch regroup move, moved on to the relic. So all you have to factor in there is we said that you can only count as claiming the relic if it's the movement phase. Well, they, they moved on to it in the movement phase, so they're currently claiming it. But you also have to remember there are some uh, nasty Necron units here. And also, the Raves have now killed that squad and moved off down there. So that is it for turn 6 for the Orcs. But we've got turn 6 for the Necrons coming up. 
Right, end of Necron turn six. And as you can see, <laughs> there's no more orcs left, hardly at all. Uh, they've been absolutely just obliterated. Um, only orcs left on the board are the Gretchen, who managed to hold on down there. Um, it was quite there's interesting. Well. Oh, there was a looter there and, and, some, and there. some looters there. <laughs> oh, yeah, and that knob <laughs> managed to stick around as well. So there's a few uh, scattered. scattered remnants of what wasn't once a, a mighty orc army. Um, here, though, with the relic, actually kind of interesting. The runt herd was actually left alive. He managed to hold on to it. And if he had managed to sit on it um, as a troop choice... With these guys being HQs, and as he moved there in the movement phase, he'd definitely have claimed it. But he broke them around, was overran. So, uh, unfortunate there. So, that is it for Necron turn 6, Imperium turn 6. Turn 6, the Imperium. We decided to move the uh, assassin here, 6 inches. This guy went into hover, picked him up. And then normally, um, you wouldn't be allowed to just zoom straight off the board. But I made an executive decision for the purposes of narrative and fun to say we'd sort of abandon that objective and they decided just to pick the assassin up and uh, you know he was picked up by the group and rescued so that's a kind of a nice ending for the Imperium there but let's remain the game remains to be seen so the Orcs haven't been tabled they still hold that they still have line breaker and it's still too all because uh, these guys they claimed this in the fight phase and as I said we're still not 100% sure on that rule but from our interpretation, we've agreed they don't count it. So the game ends now. It is a 2-2 draw. So I'm going to roll this up. Or do you want to roll it? Oh, uh, do you want to roll, roll it? Yeah, roll it. So it's 1-2-3. It's a draw. Yep. Game continues. <laughs> okay, we've had a discussion. Orcs have decided to concede because the only thing really left for them that could do anything is these guys holding line breaker. Um, there's going to get two rounds of shooting at them from the Annihilation Barges. Then these guys can move over 12, ignoring terrain. Uh, these guys can probably move and fire at them. And it just seems a bit Knight of a... Back on as well. Knight Sive's coming back on as well. Uh, and these guys, also in turn 7, these guys can just move and claim the objective. So it, it, it's basically a moot point to continue it. It's a Necron win, but God, what a close game. I feel that the Necrons, they've dominated the board mainly, but look how, look how little is left for the Necrons. You know, the Orcs have acquitted themselves really, really well and taken the Necrons, who we all know are a very, very, very powerful army, right, right to their limit. And it's been a really fantastic game. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching it. Um, fact, if you did enjoy it, do give us a thumbs up. And if you're new around here, hit subscribe. We'll see you soon with another battle report. Bye for now.